um, Liverpool, you got Allison and Keller. You know Allison's number one. You know he's number two. At yeah. Arsenal, you have two number ones. Yeah. Because Ramzo can be number one, and so can Rhea. What's going on, people? Droops TV. Yeah, we're back again, innit, blood? Oh, babe, you sound really upset. That's yeah. not the normal, like, you know, really hyperactive, enthusiastic intro you normally give. Yeah, that sound mm. like you, innit? No, I'm always happy, regardless. Could be better today, but I expected the results and predicted 2-0, so I'm okay with that. I'm Trophy okay. show is back again, as you can see. <laughs> Episode 16. Great. Sophie's in the cut. I'm I'm in the house, yes. She lost again, nothing new. Nothing you get new me. there. Uh, we lost. Something new. <laughs> Something you get me? new, yeah. Um, it's rattled me. But we did say it was going to be your hardest game of the season so yeah. far. And it's not... I, to be honest, I, I'm not really that surprised. I'm surprised it wasn't more of a sort of like toss up between the two. Like I thought you would at least scramble a goal over there. But you haven't got that that finishing bit, which is why January is so important for you guys. Oh, Aston Villa won, Arsenal nil. Mm -hmm. We dropped to second in the league. Yeah. This one thought we were still top. <laughs> I know, I meant as in clear of City. You are still three points ahead, so you're all right. Yeah, but, but that's one loss and we got Liverpool in next away game. So that is very possible, you get me? Mm -hmm. You can hear our defence falling apart outside. <laughs> as I mentioned, Liverpool. Yeah, me. The whole shit just goes woodum. <clears throat> so, so, so what? So what happened then? Where did it go wrong in your eyes? In the forward line, mm -hmm. like I've been saying, the whole season, we need a striker. Yeah. Like I've been saying, hey Zeus, you're not a plan A, you are plan B. In Ketia, that nigga plan Z. <laughs> you understand? Plan you are. Yeah, me. Like when I saw him come on, I said to myself, I just started laughing on the, on the watch along. I was in hysterics. I tweeted, "You want to go and you bring on in Ketia, blood." Like, I, you're better I, off I knew on when I, saw, I, I knew when I saw him come on, you'd be like just going mental. Yeah, I was rattled. Yeah, Reese Nelson's just sitting there, not getting an opportunity. He makes so much more of an effect on the game when he comes off the bench. He's mm -hmm. he's done that in, in 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 most of his performances. Every time he's come off the bench, he's made an effect. Yeah, he's 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 made an impact. Eddie and Ketia, the man can't even hit the fucking target from five yards out. Do you understand? Like, free as a bird, head off, there it is, 1-1, one, one, you bottle your chance, blood. You get me? Everything is just bouncing off you. You're not good enough. It's simple as so are you, blaming you are not good are enough. You, are you blaming Arteta then that, for that? Arteta for is partly to blame because <clears throat> he took too long to make substitution as well. Man management was not on point. Villa made four fucking starts before we made one. These men are 1-0 up. Yeah, and, and they've made four. We're sitting there, not creating. We're creating, but we're not finishing. Fuck all. Martin Odegaard, yet again, away from home. Doesn't put in a performance. Two sitters. Mm. Sitters. They're sitters for a man of his calibre. You understand? A man of his minerals. They're sitters. Your left foot. Middle of the goal. One you hit straight at fucking Martinez. One don't even hit the target. Gabby Jesus making the wrong decisions. Martinelli. Where is Martinelli? This, wh where's my guy, bro? Like, I don't know what's going on with this shoot. He has been so poor. Like, the Man City game. I thought the goal is going to make him kick on it didn't the lawns game when he scored that banger posting in i thought it would didn't he's just flattering to deceive this season and i don't know why the confidence ain't there he doesn't even attack his man no more he runs down the wing stops either passes back to zinchenko or passes it into the midfield he's not getting to the byline no more saka saka ain't taking risks like you gotta take risks bro you get me that you had a chance as well yeah. against villa sitter for you you whipped that. That's like your Henri. Henri had the right foot. Whoom. Saka's got it when he whips it on his left and, and it flies. You're hitting the straight of Martinez. Do you understand? You're not timing your run. You get me? Rice, put it on a plate for you, bro. You're not timing your run. You're on the wing. You're looking along the fucking line. How can you not time the run? You should see where the position of the players are. It rattled me. You understand? Absolutely rattled me. Play fucking Zinchenko again. <clears throat> again. How many more times is he going to make mistakes? How many more times is he going to cost us chances? Like, cost us. Ben White again. He's just fucking there trying to catch a suntan. Suntan where? It's 6.30 in the evening. <laughs> what are you catching, bro? You're trying to catch COVID because it's because it's cold. What are you doing, bro? Oh, if Timber funny. was fit, you were you on the bench, blood. If Tommy Asu's fit, Zinchenko's on the bench. 
We need more than a striker, mate. Yeah? We need a midfielder. We need a striker. We need a right winger to cover Saka. Because there's no fucking cover for Saka. Who the fuck you putting on the right wing? There's no one. Push Jesus there. That's the only option. You need a fucking left back. Because Zinchenko's defensively not good enough. Tommy is always injured. And he don't rate Tierney. You need a right back. Because you don't know how Timber's going to come back. Hopefully right. he comes back fit. But that was a serious injury. But it's looking good. But you still need to go in, in, that, in that as well. The fucking goalkeeper situation needs to be sorted out. Because David Rea, he's still having little moments mm -hmm. where you're like, yo, blood. Well, the man came out for a ball and completely fucking missed it again. But hold on a minute. You said earlier in these podcasts that you would play Raya ahead of Ramsdale. Is that still the case? Or do you, so do you, do you, do you feel like you need a new goalkeeper Arteta has For me, we didn't need a goalkeeper. We but didn't but need you to, said that no, you no, preferred listen, Raya, Raya no, over Ramsdale. Raya, no, no, no. What I said was Raya's the better goalkeeper. Okay. But we didn't need to go out and get a goalkeeper. Ramsdale was fine. We didn't need. I, I was not calling for a goalkeeper in the summer. But hold on. So, so now are you Arteta's saying? Arteta's fucking caused that. So now do you? So he's now caused you, friction there now because when Raya goes in there, all eyes are on Raya. Raya makes a mistake. The camera pans straight to fucking Ramsdale. When Ramsdale yeah. gets the opportunity, he makes a mistake. It pans straight to Raya. They're both going in there with 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 with. Like they're competing with each other. Do you understand? Other. And and it's, and and it's rattling them because you can see. Ray yeah. was all over the place against fucking Luton, and he weren't that and, and he weren't that secure against against um. I guess Villa. And that's down to Arteta mm -hmm. causing that. Do you understand? I think you have to be really, really careful with... Obviously, you can change up the middle of the field. That's, that's But not, the goalkeeper, that's you need to have a number one. Yeah, the goalkeeper, you need to. And, and, if, and if he felt that Ramsdale wasn't up to the task, I simply, if that was me, would have had a conversation and been there like, listen, next season, I think it's probably best you... You know, you're look elsewhere goalie. because yeah, because you're not because you're not going to play every week. And but Arteta didn't say that. He came out and said he likes to rotate the two. And when is that? But ever where is the rotation happening? Because okay. Ramsdale ain't getting a fucking look in. Okay, so Ray that's playing Champions one. League and fucking league. Okay. Ramsdale's played two games. Both he's played two games since he's been dropped. Yeah, one was in the League Cup. And the other one was because Rhea couldn't play against fucking Brentford. Yeah, but that's another thing. Well, so two in the league cup because he played against Brentford yeah. and West Ham. So number one, the, so on the honesty that hasn't really been it's pure relayed. Lies. Yeah, relayed. And especially if you're going out and saying that publicly in your in your post-match interviews and stuff. But also, when is it? When has there ever been a case where a club has rotated goalkeepers and it's worked? I don't know. I don't know of one. Like at Chelsea, you had Czech Kudacini. You knew who was number one. You knew who was number two. Yeah. Even with us, you had Chesney and Fabianski. You knew Chesney was number one. You knew Fabianski was number two. Yeah. You go to United, they had De Gea and um, Linda, Lindelof or, or, or whatever his name is. It was Lindelof or something like that. It was, li li it was same as Lind It was kind of like the same as the defender's mm -hmm. name. You, you knew De Gea was number one. You knew he's number two. City, you got Edison and Ortega. You know Edison's number one. You know he's number two. At, um, Liverpool, you got Allison and Keller. You know Allison's number one. You know he's number two. At yeah. Arsenal, you have two number ones. Yeah. Because Ramzo can be number one and so can Rhea. Yeah. But that's what I mean. I think I think he's I think he's gone the wrong way about it. I'm I'm sure the players won't be happy happy about it because now they're on the same team, but they're in competition with themselves because they don't know where they stand. I think communication is key. Um, and because he's not been honest in his post-match interview when he said, yeah, we, you know, we, we like to have two, two number ones. That's, that's bollocks. You can't. Oh, I'd like to substitute my goalkeeper during the game. But then that's one goalkeeper don't get a fucking look in. Yeah. And, and it's, that's, just, that's just too hard. You don't know how the game's going to go. Um, I, you know, a prime example would be, for instance, when Chelsea played at Wembley and uh, we, we had... Um, What's his name? Mendy in goal. And then he took him off for the penalties and for put Kepa. Kepa on. Right? Now, now, now tactically, I sort of understand. No, you had Kepa and you tried to bring him off. No, Men Mendy. Oh, no, that no. was the injury one. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, Mendy, I yeah, yeah. But, but Mendy, no, was I having, that now. Mendy was having like a fantastic and then Kepa missed game the penalty. for us. And then Kepa... He missed the penalty and no, you no, got lost. No, so let me let me explain. So so Kepa then comes on to do the penalties, which t typically, yeah, he's very good at. This one, it didn't work out. So I didn't criticise Tuchel in that moment for doing that. Um, I think that was tactically in his brain very smart. But what I'm saying is, is it didn't pay off and it doesn't really pay off to rotate goalkeepers in any way, especially during a game. Um, and I think that would have damaged Mendy's confidence a little bit just because he had played phenomenally well in that game. It wasn't like he, you know, had a... That was the Liverpool, no, no. Yeah, it wasn't like he gave like a four a four out of 10 performance. He was, he really, He made really, some crazy saves. Some I remember crazy, crazy saves. Because I was so, like, right, he's really like, I know, I get that Kepa's the better one at penalties, but when you're playing that well... Yeah. 
It's so not like it's, it's not like when you bring on a penalty taker. Yeah. You take off like a left back or yeah. a centre back. You know he ain't gonna take a penalty. Yeah. So this that was, one, this one can bang them. That's different. Exactly. But so with that the was, keeper, you can't. But, but also, that was a risk that didn't pay off, and that was a one-off thing. He's mm. not doing that in the Premier League. Hell He's not no. rotating. You're mad. So I just, just you know, just in my personal opinion, I don't think it works to have two keepers that you're gonna rotate game in, get like you know week in week out. That doesn't work. So I don't know why Arteta said that. Um, Maybe deep down he was thinking, no, I actually prefer Raya, so I'm just going to like slowly, you know, make sure that Ramsdale feels, you know, wanted. But realistically, he's a professional. He knows he knows the game. He knows what's happening. He knows he ain't going to be there for that much longer um, if Arteta is saying that. But yeah, I don't think he's communicated that very well at all with the fans and 100% not with the players. Aston Villa looking very, very, very dangerous, looking like they could take your spot in the top six. We're not going to get top six. No, but I'm saying like they could like. No, nah, listen. I think because if they continue how they're going, that's 15 wins out of 16 at no, home. No, I know, but listen. And look at the teams they've beaten. But hold on a minute. Listen, let's not get carried away. I think everything changes. Look at the in way they're playing. Team strength. Look at the, they've got injuries in that team as well. Listen, I'm saying they got I players understand. coming back into that team as well. I understand. They have been but playing without the likes of Jacob Ramsey. Yeah, yeah. yeah and when he they... goes into that midfield, they go to another level. Yes, but Ollie they... Watkins, fantastic this year. Leon Blood, Clark Bailey, my brother, stripped. Zinchenko, I didn't like that though, blood. Pause. When I stripped my man with strip gal. I never liked that though, blood. Yeah? You're lucky that you are a fellow Jamaican car would have cuss half your blood clot. Yeah? No idea what you just said. Patois. But um I believe like Aston Villa are I don't like they're not in a title race. No, but listen, and listen I like how, this is what I'm saying. I, I like how um a lot of their fans are also coming out and saying, We're not in a title race. We are pushing for top four. Like top four's a dream. They're, they're, they're more aiming for Europa League. Now, listen, I think top four's realistic. I think the... Is it realistic? But in the No, I think it, if they carry on the way they are, like I say, January, everything changes because if teams make the right uh, signings and get rid of, you know, X, Y, Z, mm. whoever is not, is, you know, causing them to underperform, uh, then everything changes. But um, I did see them interview uh, Martinez after the game bloody little cut on his face bless him um, oh, what a shame. but anyway but yeah but they, the, the question they were asking is people have said if you if you win against Arsenal today that you're you're you know you're in the title race and he was and I think he sort of said yeah you know we, we just continue to do well blah, blah 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 but I don't think they're in the title race of course they're not I think it's such title a long race is Liverpool Arsenal City it's such a yeah it's such a long long season but if they keep playing the way they do 100% they're, they're in for Champions League football next year 100% and I can, I can see that but again it is a long season and I think what will tell with Aston Villa is their away form you know because they struggled was it a Bournemouth mm -hmm. uh, and two, those two. and those are the games they're gonna they're gonna Watkins they're gonna equalizer. need because even if you're if you have, even if you have a 100% record at home if you're losing your away games and you're picking up points there you're gonna drop down the table so it is a long season um, January everything changes and, and because you know you've got teams fighting relegation and none of those games are gonna be easy for anyone whether you're top of the table or bottom half so time will tell but yeah I think if they carry on the way they are and they can pick up their away form then uh, Champions League is top four is, is definitely in sight Everton 2 mm. Chelsea 0 let's start with well listen I'm, I've not I've not come in here very the line up I've he not... drops your two most threatening uh, strikers, your most threatening forward line players Raheem Sterling and Nicholas Jetson I, I, I mean God knows and why he, he drops Sterling Broha and keeps in the road runner you know who the roadrunner well, is. He's injured it? now, so, beep, beep. so you're fine. The guy just skirts on the left blood. He's so quick. Now, do you Pause. know what? He's rapid. I have. He's fucking rapid. I have. But no, that's all he is, blood. I have no idea. Yeah, basically, we discussed that last time. Did, would you happy Friday. that Colwell was taken from the left back spot because I saw a lot of your fan base pop well, bottles when they saw the lineup and they never saw Colwell and they saw Cucurella. <laughs> but I know that you're very critical of Cucurella, so that's I why am. I want to know that you. Um, my because your fan base is split. It's like you're either Ben Chilwell or you're Cucurella. You're on the you're on the cooker you're on the bench your well side. Obviously, but yeah. the, the problem is they can't stay fit, and mm -hmm. we'll get onto this. Reese James, he came off in the twenty fourth minute um, again. Like, what is going on? Listen, Since he made that statement on Twitter about loading, brother. He's buffering. Buffering. He's buffering. Listen, Donny's buffering. Donny's there, like. <laughs> listen, I don't take. He's buffering, like listen, the don't... loading sign, all of that, like yeah, big man yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, we'll start... I'm not even trolling his injury. I'm just saying no, that nigga is buffering off that tweet. Listen, what... he said loading and how, what that, he's been loading since um uh, uh what August because it was the eighth month. I need I'm to, not I ranting. Need, I need to give. I need to I'm give my post match analysis. No, but I'm trying to get you heated. No, I'm. Not, I know what I, I'm doing. I'm, I'm numb. I'm immune. I'm You're immune numb. to heat right now. Watch her. Um, listen, I knew we were going to lose the game. 
uh, my my brother-in-law texted me at half time. He said, "What do you think?" I only only picked it up at half time. Actually, the uh, the text. I was very tired, um, and I said, 2 no Everton, second half, hundred percent. I could see it happening, uh, and I knew we were going to lose. I, I, you know, there was no chance we were going to go up there and win that game because of how we're performing, how we're playing. I can't see a system. I. The defending for me is all over the place. The Decore goal, for instance, nobody goes out to even block it. Nobody does. And I see why they're sort of saying that Colwell was trying to protect the, the post. But at the same time, you don't have to... How many, how many defenders are there? One of you can run to him. Same for the second goal. Lewis Dobin gets his first Premier League goal for Everton. Um, really good goal, but nobody runs to him. Nobody goes to close him down. So what you've got is you've got four or five defenders all there clogged in a little ball trying to protect the goal. When realistically, if just one of you went to even... You don't need to tackle them. You don't need to take them down. I understand you don't want to give away a pen, but all you had to do is go close them down. That goal doesn't go in. So there are defensive issues there. Um, Sassy got sort of like lost the ball an awful lot um, leading up to those goals. There is no system in place. Why you'd why you would drop Raheem Sterling when he's been our best player by far, and I was critical of him in the first game of the season, is beyond me. Unless there's some sort of injury we don't know about, and you just want to like say sort of say. When face. he came on, he was like he was piss poor when he came on, but he was nah. But he you was don't. To, you he, do he not fit. drop. You do not drop Raheem Sterling. I understand why Jackson was dropped. Okay, he's offered nothing. Okay, and I get he's that. Young... For more than Broha, no. I mean Broha was no, shocking. Bro no, but. Well, Broer, 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 when he comes on, generally uh, his last sort of, you know, stint was against Fulham properly anyway. Then he got injured again, but he was playing well until that point. Um, but he's been injured so much now as well. I don't want to put too much heat on him. I think it's more, I can't see a system of what we're playing. I don't, you, uh, you can't tell me what type of football we play. There's a stat where we've actually won more games with less possession than games with possession it means nothing if you have all the possession in the world. I don't care if you have 80, 90% of the possession in most most games and you just, you're not finding the back of the net. It's pointless. Absolutely pointless. I'd rather, if we were in that sort of state, we played like we would if we were 10 men down. Do you know what I mean? Or one man down, sorry. And then you just go on the counter. That would that would have been the, the more realistic, that's, that's the more realistic thing for us to do at the minute. We're not scoring goals. I... What's every, the, every, what's the no, issue no, no, now? no, 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 no. The issue is we're 12th. We're 10 points away from relegation. Because Kai Havertz was the issue. He's left. He's second. No, it wasn't. Mason Mount was the issue. He's left. He wasn't an issue. He wanted too much money and they didn't want to pay him. He wasn't Who? an issue. Well, Fans didn't hate him. No, Who? Mason Mount. Oh. What about Fans Kai? Didn't Kai, hate Kai him. was the issue though. But well, no, but, but okay. But the whole point with that is, is that he's not consistent enough and mm. you will see that eventually. I'm sorry. I'm you not will. seeing that. You will see that. He was our best player on it's Saturday been a, as well. It's been a few games. had a few good games. So... You know. No, but this is the thing now. Yeah, I love his little handball. You lot are into saying the box. that. That wasn't a handball. That should into have been the, a goal. The, it hit uh, Matty Cash goal. first. Hit Matty Cash first. So it's either a penalty. So it's our penalty because it hits Matty Cash. Mm -hmm. We should have had two fucking penalties, furthermore. I'm going to start ranting again. Yeah? No, I We should have had two penalties, I, I bro. Can you, can you stop? Because my he ears kicked are Jesus and, and then ha Havertz. <sighs> but but you lot are cussing Havertz, yeah? And saying, oh, he's going to diss. But this is the thing. Havertz is not. It's not because, oh, Odegaard was shit. Rice was good as usual, but he, he just sunk. Havertz is actually playing at a fucking level. Like, he's not, it's not like, oh, Havertz is just playing good. No, 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 no. This man has actually raised his levels. And I hope he's he keeps actually it that playing. Way. Like, when Arteta said he bought Bayer Leverkusen Havertz, okay. I'm starting to see Bayer Leverkusen Havertz. You get me? I think you lot was the bad egg. You lot was the whole, the whole fuckery in his life. You get me? He's gone now. So, who's there to blame? I've gone, I've gone to sleep. Poch? Gone to sleep. Todd Bowie. I see Poch wants can, to go out into I, the window what again. What can I finish? You're gonna buy more players. Can I finish? Who are you gonna buy? You're gonna buy Trey. Can can you stop? Because I'm you're gonna, not buying I'm not kids, gonna, I'm, I'm Trey's going, ten. Well, I'm not going to do the. He could play in the midfield. Then, if you're not gonna let me speak, he'll be playing the fucking casino. No, just because you just because you lost at the weekend doesn't mean you have to get all fiery. I'm not getting fiery. Are you on your 12th. period? Me. You seem like you're on your period. Yo, I know there's red lights here, but no, you understand. You, you That's do. about it, fam. But you're, but you're acting you like me. a woman on a period. So no, I'm not. Up. Listen. You're just I can't. I can't. Listen. If listen. I clap you, can I? It's like not like everywhere. not physically, but if I clap you, yeah, it's gonna be no, not like that. Like oh. they know what I mean when I say okay. clap here. Yeah. It's gonna go. Oh, do do do. So I, I just have to sit I, here and be told a, that I, I'm on my menstrual cycle. We need to have a conversation about Chelsea and where it's going wrong. Every episode on your channel is about your menstrual cycle. But yeah, carry on. That's why the red lights are here. It's fucking you. Once in a while. Now listen, we need to have a talk about this because you're speaking though as yeah. if Chelsea fans are. You blame Havertz on everything. 
No, we're not talking. I remember talking, last year. Havertz, Havertz, no, we didn't. Havertz, is, Havertz is, is, is completely pointless. He didn't have a good run at Chelsea. He wasn't consistent enough. He'd only turn up in the odd big game. And that's the end of it. If you want consistency in a player, he was never going to be it for Chelsea. Now, have players that have played for Chelsea that were totally shit in that moment gone on to play better for other clubs like De Bruyne and like Salah? 100%. But it was never going to work out at Chelsea. So we had to move on from it. People are talking as if Chelsea spent all this money. How can fans be angry? Fans didn't want him to spend all that money on 20 different new players, however many it was. Fans never called for that. That wasn't our choice. We wanted the money to be spent wisely. Okay, this is a situation like what Tottenham did when they sold Gareth Bale, bought a load of players, nothing gelled together and they went into the shit. They did this is finish. literally... They doesn't matter though. We're, you're looking at a team of players. Matter. You're looking at Chelsea, a team of is, players. No, 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 no. You're, no, no you're, not, you're not speaking. I called you Chelsea. Yes, good. Sophie, you're not this speaking. Is the no, you're not speaking until a, I finish. No, no, no. This no, is no, the no, biggest demise of a top six club no. that we have ever seen in and modern why? history. And why do you think? You spent a billion. And why do you think? A billion. Okay, so work it out. What, what do you think that? What, what do you think that means? You're rubbed. No, it means I don't know what that means. It means it means complete and utter poor ownership. We are not a club that is, you know verging on bankruptcy okay and going into foreclosure this ain't this isn't the, that's that's not the situation we have owners that have money what about the they have no though? idea let, i'll get to that can okay. i get to it they have no idea how to run an english soccer team if you want to call it that way he thinks that if he brought all these young players builds them up offers them all these big contracts and stuff we can get him in as many as we want to get around however many rules there are um or whatever the situation is i'm not sure if that's true but you know and eventually they'd come good and we can sell them on and we can <clears throat> build a team and whatever else. Building teams in the Premier League is not like that. You build it slowly and you have other experienced players in around them to mentor them and guide them and you need like a sort of team leader. Yeah, when Conor Gallagher and Reese James play, especially Reese James, he's one of our, you know, if not our, our best player on the pitch, but he doesn't play enough. So I'll get to that in a minute, but... The money's not been spent correctly. The club has gone into a huge sort of downward spiral because of the way that money was spent. So the owner is completely to blame. Now with Poch, I don't know what he's saying to them this in there. This team should not be 12th, I Sophie. think, but I think, of course, that. well, I mean, I don't see any... So the manager has to take a lot of the blame money, as well. Money-wise, yeah. M you know, financially, yes, not that's even the Not even the money, the quality of the players, this team should not be 12th. Poch has to take a big, okay, quality big... Of, quality of what players, though? Which Because you cuss every single one of them. So which, which because is they're the playing good, shit, that's which why is, I cuss so, them. No, so which, is the, which do you think are the good players? Enzo, Casado, right. Cole Palmer, Sterling, um, Badia Shiel. Yeah, Badia Shiel's good. So, okay, so let's, let's put it in, let's put it in, in this retrospect uh, then. So you've got Poch, who, for me, I don't think he's picking the right 11 every week. I don't have, there's no system there. I don't care. I know when Potter was there, it was all about having as much possession as possible. We know how that works. And we've, we've seen the stats, the possession, that, that means jack shit, to mm. be honest. Um, and I say that about any team. So I don't think Potter is making all the right decisions at the same time. I don't think he really knows what his best starting 11 is because the minute he gets to a, a good place, we then have another injury or something else goes wrong. So in that way, I sort of feel for him. But yeah, he does have to take some of the responsibility. Um, I'm wondering now whether he is... Do you want him out? Strict enough. I don't want him out. What I will say is, though, when you do have a team of players like this who are all very young, you do need somebody more like a Mourinho who is going to literally say, listen, if you're going to... I mean, God knows what he says in his, in his halftime talks. I wouldn't want to be there. But I reckon he says something like, if you're shit, you're out. Simple as that. So you, if, if you're in this sort of decline, you do need one of those managers to come in. A bit like when Sean Dyche came into Everton. We know he doesn't put up with any shit. He was, he was pissed off because... Um, it's about everywhere. He was pissed off because of some of his, uh, uh, it's because of Decore's little dance at the end. And he liked the fact that Lewis Dobin, you know, showed an authentic, to quote his words, sort of celebration. So he doesn't put up with any shit. Now, I don't know, because I know Poch is sort of like nice until you try him type of situation. Uh, but I'm not seeing any fire from the team. The play is all over the place. Defensively, we're a mess. This Reese James situation now and, and Ben Chilwell, it is the time to now talk about it. If Reese James could even stay fit, this is how good I think he is. If he could even stay fit for half the season, I'd keep him in there. He cannot stay fit for even half the season. We're so lucky if we get 20% out of him. Where it's time to cut ties with Reese James and sell. I'm not saying we have to cut ties with him, but we do need to go out and, and again, because of the mess we've got ourselves into, uh, offload a load of players, which I don't know how we're going to do that because they're all, they're all in on eight-year contracts Maybe and so on and so forth. Maybe you get his sister. I mean, she plays more. 
Probably. I mean, maybe. But no, like, listen, they're all on very long contracts now. So what is there a special buyout clause? Because other teams ain't going to play. They've not reached their value. Enzo hasn't reached his value, his price tag. Mudrick hasn't reached his price tag. Mudrick never will. Okay, Caicedo at the minute hasn't reached his, his his price tag, and I do think from what I've seen with Caicedo, you know, in, in highlights stuff from how he how he can play. I don't know if he's got the players around him to blossom, if that if that's if that's the case. Um, but again, Todd's got himself into a right situation now because this system isn't working. It's it's more than just players need time. This is literally like we're playing like we are a bottom half of the table team. The, we're not a hard team to play against. If you look at Chelsea and your, you know, any any of these other teams that are, are playing us in the next two to three months, they're going to think, okay, yeah, that's definitely one we can win. They're going to be more worried about playing Forest than they're playing Chelsea because that's how poor we are. So there was nothing up front, and yeah, and yeah, I go back to what I said. If Todd wanted to spend a billion, he should have just gone out and bought strikers because we can't finish. That's the issue. And then Potch Bench is the one player that even offers us anything slight to that, which is Sterling. Jackson, I don't think is ever going to become that player. I'm sorry, he's not. Um, there's a certain fire you need in, in players and that fire also comes down to not just necessarily having an ego. You don't want too much of an ego to where you, you know, sort of piss off everybody else. But you do need an ego in yourself, which is like, I'm going to be the best. And at the minute, he looks a little bit timid, a little bit scared to to go and make those runs um, and to finish. So there's all heaps of problems here. Fans, fans all agree. We never wanted a billion pounds to be spent this way. It's nice to have all these new young players come in, but again, you integrate them slowly. You don't just throw them all in. And we do. We have injuries left, right, and center. No, Mudrick is now injured. Um, Reese James, again, off on the 24th minute for a hamstring, industry, uh, for a hamstring injury. So I think with Reese James, if I was him, I would take a whole season out to improve your entire fitness and go again next season and try. I don't see the point in bringing him back as soon as, you know, trying to get him back when we think he's fit because then he just gets injured again. I think there are also problems with the medical staff. We know when Todd came in, he fired everybody that was mainly there. I mean, that's that's what was said anyway. Um, and you can see from that leaked Instagram message or whatever it was that they were saying they weren't doing the right things. So they were going, you know, players were getting fit and then getting straight back into into playing a full 90 minutes or even half half the game and then they're coming off injured because it takes one silly tackle or one whatever which a normal a normal player who's at full fitness would be able to recover from quite quickly so there's all sorts of problems there um Poch does bear some of the responsibility but the majority of what's happening to Chelsea at the minute is just complete poor ownership it's like having a business if you have if you say you run a I don't know you could run any sort of company if you have people at the top who know what they're doing how the hell are you going to are you going to make that a financially stable income for yourself and for the staff? It's never going to happen. So we need somebody who's got some brains. I think Todd needs to take a major step back and hire somebody that actually does know what they're doing because whoever is in charge of recruitment ain't doing a very good job. But I think he's very involved in everything that goes on, which is the issue. This is not NFL. This is not basketball. Okay. This is about building a team and collectively, week in, week out, you're you're getting better. Each mm -hmm. season, you're getting better. Each transfer window, you're making improvements in slight areas that you may think, okay, you know, we need this for the second part of the season. And so much, so much of the money has been spent now. I don't know who we can go and get. But if it's not clear, we need goal scorers. I've finished. I've, ran, I've rounded enough. I'm done. Man United nil. Bournemouth free. Got totally... Man United bent over. This is mad. Pause. <clears throat> yes. This is mad now, yeah. Because Man United are getting more heat for losing three 0 to Bournemouth, and you're twelfth, and you ain't getting no heat. I know. Why is that? I think that team are very, very outdated now. Okay. Uh, Maguire has a few good games. I thought he was terrible at the weekend. McTominay, shit. Hoyland, shit. But that's what I'm saying. They got really, really like gassed up know, know. when they beat. Shit. They, they got really, really gassed up when they beat Chelsea. And I'm like, listen, we are we we made you look good mm -hmm. because of how poor we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, how, and we how know how poor we are after seeing what Bournemouth did to them. And you lot couldn't even get a win. No, I weren't surprised at all. I thought United was shit that day, and I thought Chelsea were even worse. It could have been. Why. Do you know what the worst thing was? It could have been more than three 0 because Bournemouth hit the post. They, they had, had goal two goals disallowed. Two goals oh, disallowed. Two, two, two disallowed. They had one disallowed in the first. Well, Solanke, former Chelsea. Boy, he's come alive this goals. year. Eight goals, one assist. Yeah, you know we had some really good he's young players his, in our academy. I remember he got sold for I think like twenty five million or some stupidness, mm -hmm. and I was like, this guy's done fuck all. 
But now he's starting to repay the transfer fee. It took him three years, but he's starting to fucking do it finally. He's finally settled. Yeah. He's looking a decent player. Bournemouth look like... Uh, Bournemouth have fire Bournemouth in are the form team right now in the Premier League, you know? Yeah. And we were the form team until we lost to Villa. Bournemouth are now the form team in the Premier League. They, Bournemouth look like they've got like some drive. They wanted it more. Okay, they had a fire in them. Because the new manager came United in. didn't have that yeah, at all. It, it took him a time as well. Because when they sat Gary O'Neill, I was kind of like, rah, that's mad. Like, he done well for them last season. And you see what he's doing at Wolves now. When the new man came in, they were all over the place. Mm. They didn't have fluidity. They didn't have no chemistry. There was no, there, there was no style of play. It was just all over the place. Now, I see what they're on. Mm -hmm. Like, Philip Billing built the biggest spliff and lit it right on Shaw's head top. The way he came in from the back pause and cleaned yeah. him out was madness. Yeah. United were all over the place. Like all over the place. And they offer, you know what the problem is? It's like what? it's like it's like when you when you say you go on a date with somebody and they're really know. they're really nice and everything like that, but there's no spark. I wouldn't know. Okay, but what I'm saying is, is there's no spark. Yeah. Where's the spark in United? Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, um Hoyland at a stretch, even he was shit. 14, I think it's 12 games. Yeah, 12 games, no goals, no assists. Yeah. Yeah. 70 plus million. But they were the ones they were, he, they were, the fans were raving about start of the season. He looks a player. I just think it's the Man United system. Because there was chances where Dallo could have played it across and he just, he went for goal. Mm. And then Hoyland's got a custom for and he, that. And, he's, and, he, and I said him like slam his hands, hands down when it, when it didn't go his way. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, that's... You're 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 there to finish your chances, aren't you? And when when it's when it's a, I'm not saying it's they're, they're having the odd the odd bad game. When you're doing this consistently, nah, they're playing every game shit. Like yeah. the only game they played good was the Chelsea game. Yeah, but that's because we are so terrible. Like, yeah. I, I didn't think they were good at all. I spoke to my dad yesterday. He's like, no, they weren't good. He was there, front row, like could see it all. They weren't that good. We were just fucking terrible. So I don't. I th I think United need a full sort of refurb and I'd, start, I'd this, start that by getting rid of this week few. because this week they got Bayern and then they got Liverpool well you look at where they are at the t in the table they're actually not th I feel like they should be a lot lower down than what they are the table lies though yeah it does lie so I this is the thing though if they sat 10 hard I'm surprised he's still you see, there you see you but lot. who do they go and get no but this is the thing you see you lot yeah if mm. you lot sack Poch I think a new man can come in and get something out of them players. Well, I think that Man United. I think whoever comes in, well, Mourinho, fucked. Mourinho is the. They need to clear out that whole squad. I know they're fucked. Yeah, like it's not like you lot where if a new man comes in, I think he can get, he can improve Palmer. Casado will start balling out. Enzo will start balling out. You'll still you'll see you'll see your players that are supposed <laughs> to be balling out start balling out. With United, I think whoever goes in there, bro, even God himself could go in there. He couldn't fucking do nothing. I mean, I think they they just seem like a very they just seem flat. It's dull to watch. It's yeah, not. It's not. It's not exciting football. Mm -hmm. It's there's not one. Play, there's well. not one player I could say. Yeah, they've got a bit of like something in them, a bit of drive in them. And mm -hmm. also, of course, if you're not playing well, then and you've got nothing to play for in a, in a sense, then your 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 morale's down. Your confidence is down. Um, like Aston Villa would, for instance, would be the opposite to that. They have a drive in them. They have a reason to play. They want to get Champions League football next year. You can you can tell the players are are going for that. So whilst top of the league is a bit of a stretch they're going to keep pushing and because they've got a togetherness about the team and they all want to be there you can tell um you know I don't have that at the minute Chelsea I didn't think I don't think it's a lack of effort I don't see it's I don't see the players as as you know not not putting in a good shift in a in a sense they just are too young and inexperienced and that's the bottom line of it Tottenham four Newcastle one Newcastle look very, very tired now. Very tired. The injuries are starting to show. They look very tired. I think, they, I, think, I think that's the sixth game where they've had the same lineup start in a row. Yeah. And yesterday it really showed. They got some people coming back, like Callum Wilson's back, Longstaff's back. Um, Jacob Murphy is back as well. Mm -hmm. Is it No, is it Jacob Murphy? Yeah, it's Jacob Murphy. That's his name, Jacob Murphy. He's back as well. But, um, they don't really have a plan B at the minute, do they? That's the thing. Because they, they haven't got anybody on the bench, and really. And Tottenham literally blew them away. Pause. I mean, yeah, Tottenham, I mean, this is probably one of the only times. Th performance. This is one of the only times I'll compliment them, but yeah. I thought they were very I mean, good. After, after the performance midweek, Sun was saying that, yeah, we're not good enough. We're kind of missing something. But he came out and showed. Kind of bottlers. And then he came out and actually said, yo, Made assists, like, scored a pen. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah he like. Done his ting. Yeah. The ginger fucker was on fire as well. Kulisevsky is. Ed is I was going to make a make a special point. I don't like him, but he's a very, very good player. Yeah. 
which is and, but and he, you know what he also has in him he has that fire mm -hmm. in him a doge might be is it is it or is it your doggy a doge a doge okay. i think he right the now commentators say all different all different yeah i think it's ways doge. <laughs> i have to go into my black side Udoge, obviously he's not my African side. I mean, I mean, I can't, but Udoge, yeah. I think that's how you pronounce it. But I think he's probably the form left back in the Premier League right now. Yeah, very good. I think he deserved this goal as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, blew them away really, and 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 they. Looked... I think they kind of had an eye on the Champions League because they got Milan to, tomorrow or Wednesday, and they have to win, and then hope that um. Dortmund do them a favour yeah. against PSG. But if, so if I you, think if you look at, if you look at that, that game, though, if you look at if you look at Spurs and you look at Newcastle, from them. there was pure intensity Spurs from Tottenham. Literally looked like they had them, like they were all on like a lot of energy drinks. Yeah, they they were just they were like they were like fired up for that. Mm -hmm. And Newcastle looked knackered. Yeah, shattered. Absolutely shattered. They looked, they looked like they looked like they was on the piss all night. Yeah, like they came down from Geordie Land and said, "We're going to London. We're going out in London tonight, lads." <laughs> For their jaw, what is? Yeah, but they look knackered. And do you know why, though? Yeah, as yeah. well, because of the amount of injuries they've got, they can't rotate as much yeah, that's the as thing. what they Isaac, were before. Isaac started, like, that's what I said. Like, I think it's been six in a row that they've had that. And then, like, majority of their players are playing full 90 minutes. Yeah. But then they did have that chance at, at 1 0, Almiron. Um, well, Joe Linton got them a goal back at the end, but. Yeah, but that was not like literally same. 90 fucking seventh minute. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pointless by then. That Almiron chance, I think if he puts that away, it, it could have changed the game a Almiron. little bit. Almiron. Yeah. Yeah. But. And Pussy's won. I mean, even he's been a great player ever since Jack Grealish um, yeah. called him out. <laughs> Speaking of Grealish, Luton won, Man City two, Jack yeah. Grealish getting the winner. Yeah, very good Since goal. Doku's come into the side, he's kind of stepped up. Yeah. You get me? He was kind of kind of drifting away, but now he's back like two goals in, I think, these last three games. Two vital goals as well. Yeah. Obviously, the one against um, Tottenham. Luton, Luton will be winner. a team to watch out for come end of jam. You see Luton, yeah. Luton have been in every game. They haven't been blown away. No, Pause. no. It's not like Sheffield United and fucking um, Burnley, respectfully. Their men are getting slapped like a bad bee in a red light district. You get me? See the red lights there. Why do you have to you say understand? this? $50. But um, you understand? Literally, bro, their men are getting slapped. Yeah. But Luton, they stay in games. Yeah. They And and, and, and when I saw them perform against Chelsea earlier on in the season, they were, they were, they were poor. Okay, like a really poor, poor team. But it seems now I don't know what the manager's doing there, but they've got a bit of togetherness about them. They're, they're, yeah, they're scoring goals, which is, which is, which is what you need. Fucking, they can score more goals than fucking Chelsea can at the minute. <laughs> Hopefully they stay up. Pause. You understand? Because we don't let one man to stay up, blood. You get me? Uh, we're just gonna fly through the rest of the results, blood. Yeah. Palace one, Liverpool two. Liverpool very lucky in my opinion. Um, well, yeah, because obviously, nil, see, see, I'm, I'm a massive, see I'm, I'm a massive fan of Jordan Ayew. Okay, he's I, a clown, I, though. Blood. I think he's great, but he is. You've got it, to be, for you've me, got it weren't a yellow as well. But if you do it, if you if, if you make a tackle, you you make you give the ref a decision to make. I think and you and made also, the wrong just keep decision. your keep your arms next to you. Yeah. Like, just I keep your arms made, away. Yeah, but I think it was the wrong decision. Actually, Gallagher actually did that at the weekend. He went to pull him back again. I'm like, mate, you just got sent off for mm -hmm. that. Luckily, he got away with it because mm -hmm. he took his hand off. But stop doing that, okay? Mm -hmm. Play with your feet. Um, anyway, ran over. Got lucky, man. Ran over. But yeah, they did. But then obviously he got sent off. So that was that was the end that of that. That literally changed the game. Yeah, of course it did. As he got sent off, bang, 1-1. One, one. Yeah. And then Harvey Elliott, lovely finish. Yeah, very good finish. Very, very good finish on his left foot. Gave the keeper the eyes. Yeah. Bent it in the in the, the, yeah. the near post. Yeah. See, it, see it, obviously, if, if, it, if, it, if it was even, I don't think Liverpool would have had an, as, as much nah, of an easier day. Nah, at 1-0, I think Liverpool were losing that. Yeah. 1-0, 11-on-11, Palace but were winning the that red game. Card, the red card changed red it. Red card changed the whole thing, man. Yeah. Um, Fulham five, West Ham nil. West Ham getting pumped. William balls. on the score sheet. Again, <laughs> Raul Jimenez is, is scoring as well. It's good to see him scoring after that horrific injury. Yeah, I was surprised. I was, I was I was surprised West Ham got got beaten so that I. easily. Yeah. I mean I mean okay, did I expect them to? I think I had them down for a draw. Yeah. But Fulham won on fire, so it's embarrassing for them. Back to about five nil. Back to about five four. Um, Fulham as well. Yeah, wild. The man are moving mad. Yeah. Brighton one, Burnley one. Burnley getting a vital point away from home. Um, they're going down though, blood. Let's be real. Yeah, they will go down. Sheffield United won, but Brentford nil. Me and Sophie were having a discussion. She thinks he meant it. I don't think he did. Well, it was his first Premier League goal for the club. Yeah. McAtee, is it? Yeah. McAtee? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I thought, I actually think he did go for goal. You think it was a cross. I don't yeah, know. That was a cross. Well, it was a great goal. Yeah. If, if only, I would love it if a Chelsea player did that. Somebody... Somebody do that. Even if you look at the Chelsea game, right, with Decore when he scored that, we don't even have a player that's going to go in and, and, and take, a, take a shot like that when they've got some space. We have nobody. Just walking the ball into the box and getting a whole load of fuck all. Anyway, rant over. Sorry, I'm swearing today. I'm just annoying. And then Wolves won. Nottingham Forest won. 
Toffolo giving Forrest the lead and then... Wasn't that his first goal as well? Yeah, I think so. And then Cunha um, pulling it back, pause for... Uh, I'm not looking forward to our for, to our uh, Christmas Eve fixture up yeah, there. Yeah, you got... Yeah, 1pm. I, well, I've been to Wolves quite a few times. Their stadium is very hostile. Like, yeah, they're, 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 they're loud. But they put you bare far away from the pitch because the way the away ends on the side is weird. Oh, is it? Yeah, the away ends on the side. Oh, when I, oh, when I was you there, I was the always, always had a good view. You, you get the, you're on the whole side. So you're oh. not behind the goals, you're on the side. Oh, I know. I liked it, though. Nah, because like it. it's too far away from the pitch. Oh, I mean, I, can, I, I thought I had a good view. I don't like um, it. But no, nah, I'm not looking forward to going up there and I expect we'll, we'll lose Christmas Eve as well. So what can you do? <laughs> and that's it, people. I'm not going to talk about the midweek games, blood, because we're through, we're top. Yeah. It don't matter, blood. You get no. me? The man that we're going PSV to burn weed. It's simple as that, blood. You get me? Big up my Dutch brothers every time. <laughs> so, big up your damn self. Thanks, darling. Make sure you subscribe to Sophie Rose World. Follow her on socials as well. We're going to have some more, more new content coming coming forward. I think Friday we'll, we'll integrate because I had a lot of comments on my on our last, vi- uh, our last video of people saying they love this sort of stuff. Like, mm. they mm. want to want to see more of this. So I think people would like to know about us as well mm. and what we think about certain things. So, mm. yeah, we'll do a few more, a bit more of that on Friday. You feel me? So look out for that one. You understand? But you lot know the vibe. Watch along tomorrow. Um, Sorry for the hostility, by the way, in, in this video. Why? We've both been very hostile today. We're both, we're both, we're You're both very pissed angry. Off. You're on your period and I'm just I'm not on my period. For a change. I'm actually literally not on my period. It makes a change. But you lot like, share, comment and no subscribe. No tampons around here. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we're out, blood. <laughs>